E1 mechanism, however, happens in multiple steps and similar to the SM1 mechanism. E1 can occur only in tertiary alkyl halides because um, it requires the alkyl halide to dissociate by itself, and that can only happen in tertiary um, carbocations. And so, and this, and since um, the first step of the E1 and E2, or first step of the E1 and SN1 reaction are the same, uh, they compete heavily with each other. Um, so let's draw the first step of the E1, and that's this. And this is the slow step, or rate limiting, rate determining step, RDT for short. And we have this tertiary carbocation plus a halide anion, which is chloride in this case. Now, the difference between E1 and SN1 is it lies in the second step, in which instead of the nucleophile at attacking or attaching the, to the carbocation, it attacks a beta carbon for a hydrogen. So um, let's draw the nucleophile. And it's going to take, well, since all these carbons are essentially the same, we'll just have it take this hydrogen here. And so it'll go like that. And um, the product will form this alkene. Now, um, E1 reactions almost always accompany SN1 reactions, and the only way to discriminate by the two is with temperature. And so, um, let's, like, for e E1 and elimination in general, uh, they prefer higher temperatures to the higher energy of removing a hydrogen here instead of just, um, just blatantly attaching there for an SN1. So, in general, E1 has a smaller yield than SN1. Now let's go through all the elimination reactions for all the ranks of alkyl halides. Uh, for primary, we start with a strong hindered base and a, a terpene oxide, and with a, let's say, ethyl chloride. And we need terpene oxide to uh, we need terpene oxide to eliminate it because um, because the size of the terpene oxide hinders it from directly attaching and forming an SN2 reaction. So, yeah, if we use KOH, the OH would uh, just bump out the CL and make an alcohol, which is not what we want. Now, for a secondary, uh, we just need a strong base. It really doesn't matter if it's hindered or unhindered, um, just because SN2 reactions don't really happen in secondary uh, alkyl halides. So, We have the secondary alkyl halide, and then we can use, uh, oh yeah, I forgot the minus there. We can use that or KOH, and we get this uh, pro propene. Uh, for tertiary alkyl halides, we can either use a weak base, weak solvent base, and proceed through E1, or we can use a strong base and proceed through E2. Now, um, E1. Um, since it competes with SN1, it's generally not preferred to create a double bond, just because it, it's not like a good yield. So if we if we if our intention is to create a high yield of double bond, we use E2. So um, now there's something special about a tertiary E2 and hindered and using a hindered and unhindered base. So let's okay, let's do this. Let's start with this molecule. Now, let's treat this with KOH first. Um, KOH, as we all know, is a small, unhindered, but strong base. And so KOH would most rather take this hydrogen here because it creates the most substituted product. So the, react, or the product of this would be this. Now, let's start with the same alkyl halide. And we treat this with tert-beat oxide. Um, oh yeah, note that um, I can have the K here or not here. It really doesn't matter because it's still the same uh, reagent. So this uh, large hindered base now uh, has difficulty getting this hydrogen. So it proceeds to the next best thing and gets one of these hydrogens. 
and creates this product. Uh, as you can see, using a hindered strong base creates a more uh, less substituted, less substituted uh, product, just because it it doesn't have the steric ability to get the most desired hydrogen. And uh, this concludes our video on elimination of alkyl halides. Uh, post if you have any questions.